Mayor, thank you for joining me. Can you take us through the cleanup effort? Yeah, look, the cleanup effort's huge. Um, you know, I was out of the weekend to Pitt Town Bottoms and a few other places, and and you can't imagine the debris that is everywhere: you know, boats, caravans, white goods, anything you can think of, just strewn about. So, um, you know, everybody look at in those places; it's just devastating. And so the cleanup will be huge. Um, I understand that starting today, the state government um, cleanup program is beginning, and that that'll include sending skip bins to lots of uh, lots of uh, remote locations all around the Hawkesbury and, and other areas. Um, and I understand the ADF hopefully will be uh, included later this week in, in, in loading and helping our residents with some of that. But certainly the task is not to be underestimated how huge it's going to be. Up until late last week, there were still thousands of residents waiting to return to their properties. How is that process going? Are residents being allowed home gradually? Look, I think most residents are now, in, now have access back to their properties, but still some are, are cut off by floodwaters and uh, we are encouraging people not to drive through floodwaters. Don't uh, don't risk it. Uh, we understand how important it is to get home and how much you'd want to get home in that circumstance. But where there's flood water, you shouldn't. Um, but yeah, lots of people over the weekend. As I was driving around, um, you know, you can see everybody's out already on the weekend, just trying to get going on cleaning up their cleaning up their farms and their houses and everything else. So they can get back to work and back to normal life. Is assistance getting to those who need it quick enough? We know that the New South Wales and federal governments are splitting the recovery effort 50-50. Is the money getting to those people quick enough? Look, the, the clean-up probably couldn't start quick enough for our residents, is the feedback I'm getting. Um, you know, we need it now. People don't want to be sitting around looking at their, their houses and farms and businesses in disarray for, you know, a week or two while the state government and gets around to, to sorting that out. So I'm pleased that I understand they're starting probably today. Um, one point I would make is that getting the feedback loud and clear that we've got the people, the tools trades, all the equipment you could need to, to manage this clean-up here in the Hawkesbury. Um, and so the message to the state government would be to make sure you're including Hawkesbury contractors. Um, try and use our local people who have already suffered enough um, to do this work because a lot of them are out there doing it for free anyway. Um, but we don't want to have be bringing in you know, contractors from outside our area to do this work that we could easily do here. And a timely message as well, given today, of course, the JobKeeper subsidy has mm. now ended. There's a number of businesses, uh, sole traders in that region. They relied very heavily on JobKeeper and a number of them have now lost their businesses to these floods. How big of an impact is this likely to have? Look, I'm not sure what the impact of the, the end of JobKeeper would be. I mean, we are we, we are some of the hardest working people. You know, our, our area is full of tradespeople. Um, you know, with really high concentration, and and you know, but you shouldn't underestimate the impact of being isolated, um, and not being able to work all week last week for people who are uh, in the most part self-employed. Um, there is now a huge amount of work to be done, and I just hate to miss the opportunity for our people here to get to get that work. We've been speaking to a number of affected residents over the last week and, and you do really get a sense, Mayor, that uh, the community is very tight-knit uh, and everybody is really uh, coming together to help each other. Are you proud of the community? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's the most resilient, amazing place. Uh, I'll give you an example. I was at Pitt Town Bottoms, like I said, on the weekend, and I was being shown around by one resident. And as we drove around, he was pointing out all the different neighbours who were using different pieces of his equipment all over the place. And, you know, they just all came and picked it up from his shed because they knew he had it and they, and they needed it for their, their job. And, you know, everyone's clearing everybody else's driveways and road accesses. And, you know, people definitely pull together here, which is so important. What's the situation with schools in the region? When will they be able to open up again? Look, I understand most schools are now open other than those directly affected. Um, so most, most kids are back at school today, um, but lengthy traffic delays all around the place due to road closures. Um, you know, it'll be a while till we're back to normal because, you know, our community lives on, on the sides of two sides of a river and that the access is still difficult and, and so it's, it's hard for some teachers to get to work, it's hard for kids to get to school depending on where they're going. And, um, so whilst most places are open, I guess the message is take it easy. Um, still don't travel if you don't have to um, because, yeah, the traffic at the moment is pretty difficult. Uh, we're a week uh, from the floods now. It's been it's been one week and in this time we've had a number of questions raised about the Warragamba Dam and could more have been done to prevent these floods. Do you believe that the state government should have intervened sooner? I believe the state government should have raised Warragamba Dam Warragamba Dam wall by now. I don't think that, you know, I don't think that uh, letting water out sooner was an option. If you want to let out a significant enough amount of water to make a difference, we would have, we probably would have been flooded by that release last week if they'd done it. Um, so if, we, if you don't want that to happen, then I think the answer here is that they need to raise the dam wall um, so that they can hold back 
a lot, a lot more water in these significant events and we don't have to have this devastation in future. Is that something you'll be discussing with them to try and prevent something like this in the future? That's something we've been discussed, trying to discuss with them for a long time. To be honest, I don't normally get this attention from the media or the platform to say it. Um, it's only now after a bit like this that anybody cares. Um, you know, and now while people are looking at us, I want to take the opportunity to say, let's get this project going. I believe it was um, an EIS was given to the state government in 2020 and they sent it back for more work to get more, more work done on the Aboriginal rock art and other impacts upstream um, and just left left the project to, to wither away, um, getting more consultation and more work done on it. Um, and then this happens um, and this will happen again. Um, we're now in a period most likely where we will have more floods um, and the sooner they can get onto that project and get back to raising the damn wall, like they've said they're going to, um, the, the safer it will be.